Welcome to Academic Guru's Tutoring Thursday, where we answer all of your high school, college, and university questions. If you would like your question to be featured on next week's Tutoring Thursday, please submit your questions to questions at academicgurusinc.com. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay current with all of our new videos. In last week's session, we took a look at the difference between scalars and vectors. And if you haven't had a chance to view that, I invite you to take a look at that before proceeding with this session. The focus of this session will be on vectors. In particular, I'll be focusing on three different types of vectors, position vectors, displacement vectors, and resultant vectors. Just as a short recap, I mentioned that vectors describe the magnitude of a quantity and they take into account direction. And I mentioned a few examples of vectors, including displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Today I'll be focusing on displacement and I will continue to use my previous example where I talked about it's a nice sunny day and we're taking a drive around our neighborhood. In this example, there were four different displacement vectors involved. The first one being 10 kilometers east, 8 kilometers south, 10 kilometers west, and then 8 kilometers north. You should be able to recognize that these are vectors because we have not only the magnitude, but also a direction. So what I'm going to do is to zoom in into one of these vectors and we'll focus on how to construct these displacement vectors. So here I have a graph where the y-axis represents the north and south direction, while the x-axis represents the east and west direction. So here I have transferred our journey, which consisted of four displacement vectors, onto this graph. The length of the respective displacement vectors have been drawn out in proportion to the distance traveled. If I focus only on the displacement vector 8 kilometers south, you will find that the tail of the vector is positioned at point 10, 0, while the head of the vector is positioned at point 10, negative 8. As I've mentioned before, this is what we refer to as the displacement vector. In the previous tutorial, I mentioned that displacement is the difference between the final position and the initial position. Today, I'm going to challenge you to think of these positions in terms of vectors. That is, displacement vector is the difference between the final position vector and the initial position vector. Let's start off with the initial position vector. If the tail of my displacement vector is meant to represent the initial position, or in other words, where this particular vector starts, then the initial position vector is a displacement between the origin and this initial starting point. If you recall, we originally started here from home, therefore our initial position vector spans from point 0, 0 to point 10, 0. The same is true for our final position vector. If you recall, our displacement ended here at point 10, negative 8. Therefore, our final position vector again starts from the origin and spans to this point here. So as you can see here, the position vector gives us a sense of the displacement between the origin and the position in question, whether it be the initial position or the final position or otherwise. Now that you understand how position vectors are constructed, the idea behind displacement vectors should become a little bit more clear. By subtracting the initial position vector from the final position vector, you are in fact describing the net movement or displacement of an object from an initial position to a final position. Okay, so we understand position vectors and we understand displacement vectors. What happens when you're dealing with more than two vectors? Let's say we're still taking a drive around our neighborhood, driving 10 kilometers east, 8 kilometers south, but instead of traveling 10 kilometers west, you decide to stop about halfway to visit your friend. So you're driving five kilometers west. The distance between your home where you started and your friend's home is what we call the resultant vector. The resultant vector is the sum of all displacement vectors. 
Now, one thing you always want to remember whenever you're adding vectors is the head to tail method. And what that means is that you always want the head of your previous vector or the point of your final destination to be connected to the tail of your next vector, which is just the starting point of your subsequent vector. And then your resultant vector is always pointing in direction moving from where you started to where you finished. In my example, the head to tail method has already been applied, so there's no need to reposition the vectors. Our final step requires that we calculate the magnitude of a resultant vector, and for that, we apply Pythagoras' theorem. Thank you for tuning into our Tutoring Thursday channel. If you enjoyed watching this video and found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. We would love to hear from you. Until next week's Tutoring Thursday, happy studying.